What's going on everyone, it's the True Jordy, back again for the Full Time Devils YouTube channel. All the Man United fans out there, how's it going? I know, I know, we took a point off yesterday, probably not feeling too good, because it must feel like two points dropped at the end of the day. You're talking about Newcastle United, and I'm not deluded, I know what we are, let's face it. At the end of last season, we hung on by the skin of our teeth, we couldn't even beat QPR. They beat us after they were relegated, and now this season... Can't defend for shit. I mean, we tried to park the bus against Swansea, and they ripped with the shreds. So I was one of the last people to expect me to go to Old Trafford, of all places, and come away with a well-earned, hard-earned point. However, looking at it from the Money Night perspective, for the sake of this video, you must be pretty pissed off. I mean, at the end of the day, you're talking about Newcastle here. We haven't... When's the last time you heard good defensive display in Newcastle in the same fucking sentence? It doesn't happen, mate. So, these are the same two centre-backs we had six years ago when they were in their prime and we were relegated. Now, this is Manchester United, the new Manchester United. £250 million spent by Louis van Gaal to make you title winners. Not contenders, winners. And now you can't even break down Newcastle, who have just been ripped to shreds by Swansea. It's just not good enough, is it, lads? Let's fucking face it. It's not good enough. So, you know, what What made us able to come away with a point? Well, Wayne Rooney, not the most mobile of players. Back in the day, was unbelievable. But the pace is going. And he's now having to rely on people around him. He's not really being helped a great deal either, in my opinion, in terms of having pace in and around him. So, Wayne Rooney is struggling to score goals for a start. That made life easier. One matter. You need somebody who's going to stretch the defence. Go make it wider. Make it harder for us to stay compact. One matter. All he wants to do is come into his position where he is most suited as a number 10. So he's cutting inside left, right and centre. That made life easier for And although he's very technically gifted, once again, not a lot of pace to frighten you. Memphis. Memphis is a good player and is going to go on to be a very good player by the looks of it. But he's just getting started. He does not, He shouldn't be the main man. And yet I felt like he was the main threat for Manchester United in this game. And he was doing his job well. I'm not going to criticise him. But he can't do it all on his own. And then in the number 10 position, you've got Yanazai, who... Similarly, can't do it all on his own. He's a young lad, and even then, he's not the quickest. He's not the most technically gifted as of yet, and he's certainly not the strongest. So he isn't going to offer a great deal either. So there is no real fear factor at Manchester United. There's not, you know, back in the day, we've always had that one player, as a, when you take on Manchester United, who you're terrified of. Going back to Eric Cantona, then moving forward into, you know, Dwight York and Andy Cole, and now forward, you're looking at Ruud van Nistelrooy, then the young Wayne Rooney. Cristiano Ronaldo, Tevez, all of these players who you are terrified of. And now you kind of look at the team and you think, who are you really terrified of? Maybe he's Memphis by the end of the season might have turned into that player. But right now, not, not a great deal, are you? Not really scared. And then you look at, you know, Louis van Gaal is getting an easy ride by still being considered, oh, well, you know, it's a transitional phase. Can't be a transitional phase. £250 million spend is title winners, not challengers. You've got to win. I don't care how he tightens his tie in football philosophy and he's managed this club and that club. It's all bullshit, man. It's time to deliver. And with me, I'm looking at Manchester City, not even Chelsea, who are the champions. I don't, I don't even think Manchester United are competing with City for a first-team squad. And that is important. You know, would Rooney get in ahead of Aguero? Not a chance. Uh, Memphis, would he get in ahead of Sterling? Arguably. Leave that one to the debate in the comments below. As for a number 10... Man United, you could say maybe Wayne Rooney be the number 10. Juan Mata, Yanazai, Fellaini. Would any of them get in over David Silva or Yaya Torre? None of them, in my opinion. Right-hand side, Di Maria maybe? No, forgot about that. He's not there. <laughs> Seriously, though, uh, Ashley Young, uh, you know, players like that, would they get in ahead of, you know, Nasri, Navas, or De Bruyne, who looks like he's headed there? It's just so much strength and depth in the com competition and Man United just haven't bridged that gap and with all the money spent they should have done that by now it's just not good enough so for me as an outsider looking in I don't know what you think Man United fans let us know in the comments below Manchester United need to go out there before the end of this window and buy that fear factor player that player who when you line up against Manchester United at Old Trafford you think holy shit hope they don't pass the ball to him because right now there isn't a player like that, and I think every player who wins a league needs that. You know, Aguero, David Silva, Man City have got a few of those. Chelsea, last season, Hazard, Diego Costa. Manchester United, you know, Rooney isn't a player anymore. Memphis might be that eventually, but it's just not there. 
It's just not there. So let us know what you think in the comments below, because right now, for me, if Louis van Gaal doesn't deliver the title this season, then it's been an absolute, utter fucking failure. You've been watching The True Geordie. You can check out my channel. The link will be in the description below. Don't forget to like the video, and I'll see you later.